All right, I'm actually gonna start early today because I want to get this out of the way as soon as possible because Splatoon 3 DLC came out and I want to do that. So, uh, hey, Cyberspace, Binary here. I play video games. This will be a salty stream more than likely. <laughs> we are playing the end of Splatoon, uh, Splatoon 3's post game, also known by me as Girl Power Station 2 Electric Boogaloo because, I mean, look at this place. So I should probably grab a pencil and paper because I think one thing that will help is remembering the order at which enemies spawn in this wave. I believe next comes the, um, yeah, the Brellas next. And then the Ghoulies. Oh, that was the roller. What's the Ghoulies? The Ghoulies are here. That's Brush. That's Blaster. Yep, Blaster took me out. Expected that I should have ran forward. Because with Blaster, you want to head towards it because its its range is weird. I think I have a brush there somewhere. <clears throat> Alright. So this place painted while I can. I'm also going to set this up for now. So I've heard that... Actually, this guy, I think... I'm, I've been told that... The buddy... Little... Oh, shit, that's Brella. And a blaster, which I don't, really don't want no part of. God damn it. I don't really like how rude these guys are with their sub weapons. All right, now for the hard part. Where are they going? I kind of want to bait out their specials, if possible. So I've been told to stay away from that. I don't think they can re redo a special once they've placed it. So. Getting them to use it right away would be nice. Hi, buddy. Take it out. Survive, gotta go survive. Right, I live. Dead. You're dead. There's the roller. There's the roller. Okay, got it back. We get away from that. Come on, umbrella. Umbrella's dead. Who's left? wave is really long, which I think does not help with the difficulty. I need to use my little boy a little bit more. I'm told that he does distract them. Sometimes. I've heard it's maybe not always consistent about it. Right, where's Brella? Bad play. I mean, I did look up videos to try and get some help, so it being easier now wouldn't surprise me. Umbrella. <clears throat> Okay. 
think. to stay away from that back wall in that last wave. Because I've got nowhere to go if things go south. is going to be trickier. Alright. We survived round one with without um, too much trouble. Can special. Honestly, I feel like the splashdown is more helpful. Okay, this is the first time we made it this far with armor. There's no more cover, so we don't have that going for us. <clears throat> and now they have specials. I think they do actually reuse their specials. better though. That was uh, probably my best run apart from the one where I actually got to near the end of that wave and then fucked it all up and lost. doesn't give me trouble anymore, and wave two also doesn't really give me much of a hard time. Oh yeah, they remove all the cover here.
Give him a cover. Actually, there's a fair amount of it. God, my fucking heart is racing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm glad I stopped last time. I think I was in a bad spot. And being able to sit down, watch people go over their strategies and how they beat this level, and then think and, like, my approach about it really helped. <laughs> like, a lot. I'm glad I did that. I think that was for the better. <laughs> Teddy band. Oh yeah. All right, and we unlocked an archive thing, didn't we? Yeah. Recall for a moment the first apocalypse that devastated the human race. Those who escaped the ca into the caverns of Alterna were not the sole survivors. There were others who escaped via a giant rocket ship, the Ark Polaris, uh, or Polaris. Launched in the nick of time, this ship was laden with many of Earth's species and had been placed in cold sleep. The mission was simple, find another planet to replace the Earth. Considering the circumstances of its launch, Paris had a smooth voyage until it had reached the edge of the solar system. It was at that point that debris struck the vessels, damaging its navigation system. The crew was able uh, to turn back the ship or head back towards Earth, but the effort was in vain. There was not enough fuel to attempt a landing. The Ark Polaris drifted aimlessly for 10,000 years. Eons passed, the once stable orbit of the Polaris had uh, decayed over time until the ship found itself in the inescapable pull of Earth's gravity. Reentry was not kind to all of its inhabitants. Perished save one. Bear number three, an experimental subject who retained consciousness within his cold hibernation, survived. For 12,000 years, he dreamed and plotted. Fully awakened, Bear three came to a terrible realization. He had not landed on a new planet at all. He was back on Earth. And yet it was not the, an Earth he knew. This Earth, it seemed, was dominated by sea creatures, not a single mammal to be found. In the course of his search for even a single fellow mammal, Bear 3 used the navigation equipment from the wreckage of the Ark Polaris to discover Alterna. It was a wasteland of... Oh my god, excuse me, of course. But the, a few of the liquid crystals that once covered the walls and ceiling remained. With knowledge built during his thousands of years dreaming, he repaired some of Alterna's facilities and began researching the crystals. This research bore fruit when Bear 3 compounded some of the liquid crystals within his own fur. The experiment created an entirely new substance with one terrifying property. Transform any living creature into a mammal. How very specific. Bear 3 did realize the implications immediately. He could restore the planet to a mammalian paradise. He began stockpiling fuzzy ewes, as he called it, with, alter with an alternative still intact rocket. For such venture, he would require the acquisition of thousands of golden eggs. These were used in the creation of Fuzzy Ooze, although the exact details have never been recorded in memory banks. But Bear 3 had a plan. He founded a corporation that would go on to employ locals to collect his golden eggs under the name Grizzco Industries. Mr. Grizz, as he was now known, would pay handsomely for them. With Fuzzy Ooze production peaking thanks to the assistance of unsuspecting inklings and octolings, Mr. Grizz took the final steps to set his plan in motion. The rocket was loaded. It wouldn't be long now. Oh my god. That I... Whew. 
That's hard. But I had a much better time with it today than I did on uh, on Wednesday. But yeah, thank you. thank you all for joining me to finish off that. I had a feeling it wouldn't be long, which is why I wanted to start early. Um, I'm going to stop stream briefly. And we're going to switch over to Xenoblade. Also, this is my Inkling. Or Octal... Octoling? I guess? Anyway. With that, um, I'm going to stop stream. I'm going to change the stream details. And we're going to begin... Or continue Xenoblade 3. So, for those of you in chat, I'll see you in a sec. And have a great day, everyone.